that he'd made a, a deal with the wrong guy and not probably shouldn't have trusted Netanyahu. And Netanyahu has played him and Biden hasn't. He can do something about it right now, Michael Moore. He's still president of the United States. He could do exactly what you're saying, which is cut off the weapons flow. He won't do it. No administration will do it. He'll continue to give nice words to the Palestinians, saying, we care about the Palestinians, we promise. Uh, this race has flipped on its head in the past week. Uh, Democrats have gone from, in many cases, despondent to enthused. Uh, the excitement's coming from all over the place. What do you make of it? Um, everybody should be excited. This, is, this was an incredible week, and I think it's gonna continue. I think there's gonna be one surprise after another in terms of how well uh, Vice President Harris is going to do. Uh, this was an excellent move. Uh, uh, Joe Biden did the right thing. He'll, history will remember him for it. And um, and if it results in us having our first woman uh, uh, president, uh, even better. I'm not frightened by Donald Trump. Uh, there, there's no reason that he should ever go back into the Oval Office again. We live, in a, we live in a very different country now, different from even uh, the eight years ago when he was first elected. Elected thanks in part to Michigan. Uh, the candidate and her campaign made a decision in 2016 to not visit Michigan, to not visit Wisconsin, and we lost Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, and that was the, the whole difference right there. Mm -hmm. And now, any analyst that you look at for this year's uh, election he said, essentially, you lose Michigan, you lose the White mm -hmm. House. Mm -hmm. Critical. We're talking about 300,000 Arab and or Muslim voters in the state of Michigan. Biden won the Arab Muslim vote in Michigan by about more than 60% yeah. in 2020. Uh, the last poll I saw from two weeks ago, uh, less than 15% of the Arab Muslim vote in Michigan will right. vote at that we point. Saw for that in the I'll tell you right now, Kamala Harris's policy towards Israel and Gaza and that whole situation is going to be exactly the same as Joe Biden and dare I say it, Donald Trump. Whatever it comes to the security state in this country, they always get what they want. Doesn't matter if it's a Trump administration, doesn't matter if it's a Kamala Harris administration. And her simply not showing up for BB's speech is all political theater. Yeah, Trump's rhetoric towards Palestinians sucks. At least he tells you who he is. Versus Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, they'll say nice things about the Palestinian people and the policy will remain the same. And I'll also say this, both Obama and Trump have said Benjamin Netanyahu does not want peace. He hasn't offered peace, and he wants to continue denying the Palestinians their statehood. And their actions speak volumes every time it's vetoed in the Security Council in the UN. They don't want a Palestinian state. They say they do, but do they actually? And do you trust Kamala Harris to solve this decades-long conflict that's been going on since I've been alive when she has next to no foreign policy experience? The Democrats keep selling us that there's going to be a massive change in policy if Kamala Harris becomes president. I won't hold my breath. Going to a Democratic yes. primary saying I would typically be a Democratic voter, but I'm not voting or I'm, I'm, I'm registering the, my, my frustration with Joe Biden. Yeah. I will say, after meeting Netanyahu the other day, not presiding over the whatever that was in Congress, uh, Kamala Harris sounded substantially more empathetic toward the, the cause of Palestinian civilians who are being killed through no fault of their own. Again, nice words. There won't be a change in policy. Prove me wrong, Kamala. Allow security resolutions to give the Palestinians a state. You don't even have to vote in favor of it. Just don't veto it at the Security Council. Threaten to cut off the weapons flow to Israel. Don't worry, she'll give you some nice words, but there won't be a change in the policy. Absolutely. Uh, but it's not just empathy, because the Palestinians right now in Gaza don't need empathy. Right. Uh, they need a stop. They need a stop to us, you and me, taxpayers here in the United States. We are the bank for Netanyahu and this war. We are funding it. We have armed him. We are. That means that makes us responsible for the deaths of nobody knows the number now. Let's, but the common number that people say is over 40,000 civilians, many of them children, have been slaughtered with my tax dollars and, and the armaments that we have sent there. That has to stop. And Biden right away, he knew that he'd made a, a deal with the wrong guy and not probably shouldn't have trusted Netanyahu. And Netanyahu has played him and Biden hasn't. He can do something about it right now, Michael Moore. He's still president of the United States. He could do exactly what you're saying, which is cut off the weapons flow. He won't do it. No administration will do it. He'll continue to give nice words to the Palestinians, saying, we care about the Palestinians, we promise. Kamala Harris has a way to, to get out. She's right. the new fresh voice, but she also uh, has a history of this sort of thing. The fact that, I mean, just the fact that she did not show up. When, I was trying to think, when was there a time when the vice president, who is the president of the Senate, right. and there's a joint session of Congress, 
what doesn't show up and you know that doesn't happen and we've had we've had you know tony blair there and we've had the pope i mean there are other people that come for a joint session but i i, I went back actually i think i found one or two instances in the last 20 years where the president of the senate didn't show up yeah. what did she do in, on that day uh she went to a sorority meeting in indianapolis okay uh, that was the. Ex she was there, by the way. It was a convention yeah. of a, a, a sorority, but but I mean, I think Netanyahu got the message that he's not going to be able to play her. Right. So it will really be up to her. But Ali, I really feel very strongly about this that she and her vice president shall pick. Who I sincerely hope. I mean, all the people they're talking yeah. about are good people. Yeah. But Josh Shapiro uh, has not been good on this issue with Gaza. He's no, not been. He he's been very um, uh, much against the protests, uh, 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 the pro-Palestinian protests here in the U.S. He's also, weirdly enough, um, in, in agreement with certain parts of the educational planks that are in Project 2025. I mean, people should really check into this. The campaign needs to vet him on this. We don't need a J.D. Vance situation that Trump is in now with buyer's remorse. And I don't. I think this will hurt Michigan if somebody who has, has been sort of, uh, essentially, pro-war. Uh, on this uh, should not be her vice president. I think Benjamin Netanyahu is significantly smarter than Kamala Harris when it comes to this conflict and this question. Benjamin Netanyahu bragged that he duped Bill Clinton and Bill Clinton is a very, very smart person. Somehow the great Kamala Harris is gonna somehow convince Benjamin Netanyahu to somehow want to give the Palestinians a state. Don't fall for Democrat propaganda. Let's do this as somebody who knows a lot about yeah. the, the union yeah. worker situation in, in, in Michigan. We've got some unions who are still holding out to, to get more assurances from Kamala Harris. You got, a, you got a sense of who it should be if you're looking at it from a, a worker or union perspective? Okay, just from a personal perspective, yeah. uh, Pete Buttigieg, uh, uh, this past uh, year or so, uh, he and his husband moved to the town in Michigan where I live now, uh, where where, he, where his husband grew up. So he is now an official uh, Michigander, and I, I think where they their place is uh, just a mile or so down the road. Okay, that has nothing to do with how I feel. I feel very good about Pete Buttigieg. Uh, in fact, uh, um, uh, he, when I saw him on Bill Maher a week or so ago, and he was incredible. Yeah, it was a very really good exchange. Smart. You know what I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I think he's good. I, I, th I think uh, uh, Cooper, the governor of North Carolina, is good. I think you know. But right away last week, I said, what would be wrong with two women on the ticket? I mean, why not our governor? We need Michigan. We need she says she's Michigan. taking Michigan. People, a lot of people think it'd be a great know, idea. You know, this is we are in desperate times. Yeah. And sometimes all of us, if called need to step forward if we really believe that we're trying yeah. to save the democracy. Well, she's demonstrated so, an ability to win and cross lines and, and yes, uh, take on some of yes. the important issues of our time. Michael, good to yes. see you. As always, uh, out of time, but uh, let's continue the conversation. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. Michael Moore. If Kamala Harris gets elected or Donald Trump gets elected, the policy towards this is going to be the same. The United States likes to have a military ally in the Middle East, and that happens to be Israel. We will continue to give them diplomatic cover no matter what they do in Gaza. And I don't think Michael Moore actually believes that Kamala Harris will change policy. He just simply hates Donald Trump.